Hey there, Margie Bryce here bringing you the Krabby Pastor Podcast. And I don't think you're going to be too surprised to know that it's too easy today to become the Krabby Pastor. Our time together will give you food for thought to help you be the ministry leader fully surrendered to God's purposes and living into whatever it takes to get you there and keep you there. So we're talking about sustainability in ministry. So those of you who preach, have you ever had just such an amazing, amazing illustration that you wanted to use it, but it didn't fit quite right anywhere? Well, I do, and I'm going to share it with you today, and you can do with it whatever you like. Yeah, you can do with it whatever you like. And it has to do with turkeys again. So, you know, I'm in keeping with the holiday season of Thanksgiving and of eating turkeys. So I waited a good couple years before I could use this, but it finally, finally could be used. And I'll share that at the very end of this podcast. But I was living in a home where, and this is this is maybe right around the time I became a Christian, although it had to be, no, maybe not. It was like almost, almost that time in my life. And what happened was my oldest child at that time, who was closing in on three years old, two and a half, three in there. And then his younger brother was a baby and he was taking a nap. And so my two and a half-ish, three-ish year old child is in the backyard. We're on 10 acres, by the way. And there is a barn and there are critters in the barn. We had, of course, you had to have a turkey for this to be a turkey story, right? And I think there was a pony out there. There was um, some, a beef thing, you know, his name was hamburger or sirloin. I can't remember which, but we had chickens for eggs. And so the, the turkeys at that point were kind of running in the backyard ish. You know, there was only a couple, but there was only one out there that afternoon. My two and a half year old was out on the little swing set. That's, you know, pretty close to the house. And, he and my house, let me describe this for you. So it was a walkout basement and you could walk out and go out the door downstairs, or you could be upstairs off of the living room and you would step out onto a balcony kind of thing. And that's kind of the the setup. And, you know, so I'm watching him and at the same time, just, you know, keeping an ear out for the baby that's sleeping. And All of a sudden, I do hear the older child, my older son, shrieking out back. And I looked out there, and what I saw was the female turkey was kind of stalking my son. You know, her head is bobbing back and forth, kind of like, you know, King Tut with Steve Martin. And if you don't know what that is, you can just Google that for fun later. But she's kind of stalking after him. And she's quite a ways from him, but she's still after him. And he's hollering at the top. He's like, she's going to get me. She's going to get me. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. And I'm trying to think through, you know, the baby's in the house. What do I do here? What do I do here? So I hollered at him to walk towards the house. I said, come this way, come this way. And so he he kept walking. He's not running. He's still walking. And she's still following him at a good distance. But she's still following. Because if she had been close, you know, I would have gone and, you know, gone after her myself and run outside to do that. But she was still a ways back. But he was scared. And so he walked towards the house. And I told him, go under the deck, go under the deck where mommy's standing, go under the deck. So he did that. And I said, go up against the wall, go up against the wall. And I could look between the slats and see him. He was like glued to the wall. You know, his back was to the, you know, the wall of the house there. And so what did I do is I picked up a rather large, it was plastic and it was 
had dirt in it, flower pot. It was good sized, you know, like bigger than a quart. I don't know what the next size up is, but it was big and it was heavy. And my goal was to drop it down and then she would be scared and she would go back towards the barn area, not wanting to have any more to do with civilization, hopefully. However, when I dropped her from the balcony way up high, and I don't know, you might have to Google a picture of a female turkey for for reference or any turkey for that matter to see the size of their head compared to the rest of their body. And it's really pretty tiny, which probably accounts for the amount of brain space that they have. They're very, very not bright. And when I bombs away, let the uh, flower pot go, it beamed her right in the head. I mean, like if I was planning on that, I would never have pulled it off ever, ever. But since I was not planning on it, you know, I hit her right in the head. So to which my son hollers at me, Mom, you didn't got to make her be dead. And, you know, I've asked him, he's an adult now with his own child. And, you know, he does remember this. He does eat turkey at Thanksgiving. So that trauma is not there, apparently. So, yeah. I I have, I can lay claim to the fact, and I'm pretty sure it's past, way past the, um, what is it, the amount of time where you could turn me into PETA or something like that, um, statue of limitations here. So I, um, yeah, I didn't mean to do that. And that was a grand failure on the mom scale somewhere. And of course, I did go and uh, tend to him and, and we talked about it and all that. And I didn't mean to be in the turkey and make her be dead. Hey, I would love to hear what makes you crabby or what might make you crabby on just the right day, you know, or maybe, maybe you know what makes your friend in ministry crabby. You could send that along too. send it to Margie at MargieBryce.com. That's Margie at MargieBryce.com. And that may indeed be fodder for our next session together. So, but let's talk about unintended results and how you can learn from those. Because, you know, the the truth of the matter is, if you're not trying stuff, and this is probably, this is not how I used it as an illustration, by the way. But if you're not trying stuff, uh, that also means you're not failing at anything. Or if you're not failing at anything, you're, it also means you're not trying stuff. And this is an age of, experimentation right now. We're in an extraordinary times and we are uh, needing to try some stuff and see how we can bless other people. So uh, you want to learn from your mistakes. I can honestly say I never thought it was a good idea to drop a flower pot on anything from on high since that moment. And I have learned that I can so do a direct hit from high up, but that it's probably not a great idea. So you failed at something. So you had unintended results or consequences, however you want to characterize that. And, you know, the question is, what can you learn from it? Now, let's take this to the people in your congregation, people that you serve in ministries, people you serve with in ministry, and a failure or an unintended consequence happens. And the question is how to be gracious to them and how to ask questions so that you can learn from the situation so you don't make the same mistake again, or just learn some new things about yourself about how things operate so that you can then move on from there. So what you're encouraging, though, is a an environment where failure is not the criminal offense of all things, which you need if you're going to experiment and you need so that you can try some things out. And if they don't work, you just say, oh, well, what did we learn? 
I mean, besides, we're probably not going to do that again. But what are some things we learned about ourselves and how we work together or how we function? What works for us? What doesn't work? Because sometimes even in the midst of all of this, you can learn some good things. You can learn some good things about yourself, even from failure. So you want to cultivate that kind of environment where failure is not the criminal offense and is heavily shamed upon where you are serving. So going back to the very beginning, where I said I would tell you about how I did indeed use this as an illustration in a uh, sermon, because you can, it wasn't about failure or unintended consequences. Actually, I used it on Mother's Day. So, and it was an illustration about the passionate love a mom has for her child. And I realize I'm skating some sort of edge on this, but it, you know, when stuff like that happens in your life, it's got to be good for something, right? Hey, thanks for listening. It is my deep desire and passion to champion issues of sustainability in ministry, and for your life. So I'm here to help. I stepped back from pastoral ministry, and I feel called to help ministry leaders uh, create and cultivate sustainability in their lives so that they can go the distance with God and whatever plans that God has for you. I would love to help. I would consider it an honor. And in all things, Make sure you connect to these sustainability practices, you know, so that you don't become the crabby pastor. <laughs>